how to feel motivated to quit smoking. Hi, this is Nasia Davos and in this video we'll talk about how to feel motivated to quit smoking. You've asked me this, many of you, you want to quit, you have your reasons, but you find it hard to actually do it and you think you lack motivation. Or you tend to quit when your motivation is high and then when your motivation dips, you relapse and you want to know how to sustain it. Now, everything that has to do with motivation and starting your quit smoking journey is part of the first stage of the CBQ method, choose to quit. But in this video, I'm going to show you three things you need to know that will help you feel motivated to quit smoking and maintain your motivation. And none of it is about health care. So keep on watching. Before we get started, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button so you can get notified when we release more videos that will help you on your journey. So let's talk about motivation. Usually, when we feel unmotivated to quit smoking, we take that as evidence that we don't really want to quit. But I want you to know that you already have the ability to want to quit smoking. You already have inside you the desire to quit. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here watching this video. So there is a part of you that wants to be free, but there is something stopping you. And you know, all of us, at some point in our life as smokers, we come to face a specific conflict. The conflict between wanting to smoke and wanting to quit. The conflict between the desire to smoke and the desire to quit. We want to quit because smoking has harmed our health, our pocket and our freedom. But we also want to smoke because we're addicted. So we experience a clash of desires, a clash of motivations. Think about it. You have the desire to quit that comes from the reasons you have for wanting to quit. And at the same time, you have the desire to smoke that comes from the reasons you have for smoking. Reasons like socializing, coping with stress and boredom, taking a break, keeping your hands busy, concentrating, enjoying your personal time, or even managing your weight, right? And even if smoking benefits you in zero ways, zero, now all these occasions and reasons, they have been linked so closely with your smoking habit that on some level you're afraid that if you quit, your cigarettes will take away with them your capacity to enjoy life and cope with your problems. That's why you feel you enjoy, love, or even need smoking. And as long as you believe that smoking adds some kind of value to your life, you will keep craving cigarettes, you will want to smoke, you will be motivated to smoke. So it's not that you don't want to quit, is that you have a conflict of desires and motivations. There is already a part of you that wants to be free. We need to tap into that part. And I'm gonna show you three things you need to know so you can do that. Number one, motivation gets you started, but the decision and the commitment is what sustains you. We tend to think that motivation is something you either have or don't have, and once you have it, it goes upwards. But it doesn't work like that. Motivation actually, it doesn't last. There is a quote by Zig Ziglar that says, motivation doesn't last, well, neither does bathing, that's why we recommend it daily. I find it so funny. But recent, even research shows that motivation fluctuates. It has ups and downs, it goes like that. So if you quit smoking when your motivation is high, your pack finished, you got some news from your doctor, you woke up in the morning and you started coughing. If you quit when your motivation is high, then you're very likely to relapse when your motivation is low. So the key is not to have motivation all the time, but to expect and navigate the times when you're not motivated and be able to renew this motivation. And when your motivation is down, and it will be, it is the, your decision to quit smoking that will sustain you. And I'm sure there are other things in your life where you have decided you're gonna do something and it becomes irrelevant if you feel like it in the moment or not because you have decided. And it's the same way. And it's deciding to quit smoking is part of the first stage of the CBQ method. And if you wanna know more about it, make sure you get the foundational video of the CBQ method. You can find the link in the description. But listen, just being aware that your motivation has ups and downs, it helps because when you face a dip in your motivation, you will know that it's okay. You're not gonna take this as evidence that you cannot stop smoking. Instead, you're gonna help yourself through it, you're gonna help it pass, and you're gonna be able to renew your motivation. Number two, know why you're motivated to smoke. We already said you have a conflict of motivations. 
And one of the things we teach on the first stage of the CBQ method is that you cannot stop doing something you don't fully understand. So you need to know what stops you from quitting smoking. You need to know why you smoke. And don't just ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I smoking? Because many times the answer is, I am self-destructive, I don't have enough willpower. And of course, these answers, they don't help at all. Instead, ask yourself, what do I believe smoking offers me? How do I think smoking helps me? Or what am I afraid will happen if I don't smoke? That's a big one. For me, I was afraid I was not going to be able to cope with stress without smoking. I wouldn't be able to concentrate, enjoy social situations, wouldn't be able to cope without it. I used to believe that smoking was the only pleasure I had in life. Of course, now this sounds absurd, but back then I really believed it. So whatever it is for you, whatever it is your reason why you smoke, write it down even if it seems bizarre. Because unless you know what stops you from quitting, it will be very hard to feel motivated to stop it. But when you know why you smoke, you have more clarity. And when you have clarity, it's easier to find a way forward. And if you want to take this exercise one step further, for all the things you wrote, for all the reasons why you smoke, try to find an alternative way to get this benefit. For example, if you wrote, I, the reason I smoke is because it helps me cope with stress, Ask yourself, how else could I cope with stress? Or how do non-smokers do this? This is going to help a lot. Number three, know the reasons why you want to quit smoking and keep them on top of your mind. You already have your reasons, I know that. But sometimes our reasons are not enough to make us act and then we feel guilty about it. And when this happens, it's usually because you have the reasons why you should quit smoking, but you don't have the reasons why you want to quit smoking, which is way more motivating. And you need both. You need to know why you should and must quit smoking, and you also need to know why you want to do it. And if you're still thinking, I really don't want to quit smoking, let me ask you this. How would your life change if you were to stop smoking? What would you love about your smoke-free life? What would being smoke-free allow you to do? How would your relationship with yourself and others change for the better? Now, the answers to those questions will help you find why you want to quit. And of course, you need to make your reasons easily accessible. You need to have a physical cue. You need to make a habit to remember your reasons. Because when your motivation dips, and it will, and you're craving in that moment, and you're in a tense state, it's going to be impossible to remember what motivated you to quit smoking in the first place because your thinking is blurred in that moment. So you need to have your reasons visible. What our members do, they put the reasons on their fridge, in their wallet, stick it to a mirror, a screensaver on your phone, or have a one-minute morning gratitude routine where you say why you're grateful that you're a non-smoker. For one minute every day, this can help you wire your brain and start focusing on what's going well for you. And of course, this increases motivation. So how to feel motivated to quit? You already have the desire and the motivation to quit smoking. You need to tap into it. And three ways to do that. First of all, don't overestimate motivation. Expect highs and lows so you can navigate them. Number two, know why you're motivated to smoke because you cannot stop doing something you don't fully understand. And three, know why you want to quit, not why you should quit only, but why you want to quit and keep your reasons visible at all times so they can be easy to access them when you need them the most. Like we said, feeling motivated and deciding to quit smoking is part of the first stage of the CBQ method, choose to quit. In this stage, you make a firm decision to quit smoking that will keep you, that will help you stay committed to your goal, no matter what challenges you face along the way. But the CBQ method has four quit smoking stages in total. And these four stages take you from a lifetime smoker to a happy non-smoker because they help you overcome the mental addiction so you can stop wanting to smoke. And I want to show you how you can apply the CBQ method to your own life and find quitting easy. So if you want to know how to get started with the CBQ method, why it works and why it can work for you, we created a video where I put all the information for a good foundation, which is the foundational video of the CBQ method. So 
get the video, the link is in the description and you're also going to get a PDF starter guide for the CBQ method and this guide shows you what happens on every stage and it also has tips for every stage so go get it now and before you go let me know in the comments what helps you feel motivated if you like this video hit the like button subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next video